Hello, everyone. Uh, about two years ago, maybe one and a half year ago, I made a video on TNO or ETNO Alicanto. And on the 16th of Mar May, uh, the sun is crossing over Alicanto, highlighting and illuminating this extreme TNO. Extreme TNO means uh, extreme uh, trans-Neptunian object. Actually, this particular one has an orbital period of 6,071 years. Imagine that. About half uh, of the orbital period of Sedna, but still, I mean, not half, hold on. Yeah, half, about half of it. And um, actually, um, it is linked, this particular TNO or ETNO is linked to greed. And the reason why I, uh, I'm doing this video is because two days later, we are entering a very funny period where a number of things can happen in the world stage. And for some reason, I think that this particular day or the 16th, when the sun is crossing over uh, Alicanto and actually uh, it is becoming Kazdimi, we are going to look at it why, uh, is the, the prelude, the, the, uh, the overture of, of the events that, are, that hopefully will occur because the sun is always highlighting and illuminating everything it touches. And Alicanto, as I said, is linked to greed and uh, more functioning because of greed. So let's take a look at the space-time moment. I, of course, created a, some charts for you to take a look at. So the exact conjunction is going to occur on the 16th of May at 13.56, obviously, p.m., so uh, around a little bit before 2 o'clock. This is the Sun Alicanto Casini when the Sun is exactly conjunct TNO or ETNO uh, Alicanto. So if we take a look at the space time moment uh, for the London chart, you can see that there's this, this huge conglomerate of uh, celestial objects in Taurus. Well, actually, Sedna is already out of them because it sets zero degrees, the said, uh, uh, Gemini. Uh, the Chiron Aries conjunction is is applying. It's, it's still far away, uh, a couple of weeks away. But the Mars North Node conjunction is going to be exact in a couple of days, and uh, the Sun is actually conjunct Juno, so highlighting the um, um, the alliances. Not it's because Juno is not just the First Lady, but on the verse stage, it is more like alliances and pacts and, and covenants. And of course, we have um, two Liliths actually there um, uh, at the IC and Pallas Athena, which is about to move into uh, uh, Scorpio, back into Scorpio. And uh, Saturn is on the descendant. And here the descendant is not just, uh, again, the official spouse or the partner, but also open enemies. So that's the space time moment. Now let's take a look at the, the bird itself. So Alicanto is a mythological nocturnal bird and it is it dwells in the treasure, uh, in the desert of Atacama. So uh, it is part of Chilean mythology. If you want to read the whole story, you can Google it. It's beautiful, actually. So this particular bird feeds on gold and silver. So its wings and, and, and uh, feathers are made of gold and silver. And it has beautiful metallic colors. And of course, the eyes, its eyes are also um, emitting strange lights. It's quite beautiful. Uh, but it tends to eat too much. And since gold and silver are quite heavy, if it eats too much uh, or when it has a really full stomach, it immediately is grounded. So it can't fly. And because hunters would love to find this particular bird with gold and gold and, and silver treasures. Uh, so they are constantly hunting for it. It needs to hide from its hunters uh, and uh, tries to do that every time it eats too much. And consider the world at the moment. This is exactly what's happening. Um, greed, uh, immoral and total uh, horrible greed is leading the world, the, the, uh, the leaders of the world. Uh, and also the uh, the leaders of the big corporation and uh, all kinds of other uh, global entities. 
have no shame by hoarding uh, our goods, actually, our, our assets. And uh, today, on the, the 16th, they actually might uh, resurface. They might, we, we actually, we the people might get a glimpse of their true nature. And since the, six, since the 16th um, is the crossover. And after that, there's a series of conjunctions, not just by the sun, but also by Venus. So we are going to look at interesting times indeed. Now, let's take a look at Alicanto's astrological and astronomical uh, facts. So it's in the ETNO, extreme TNO, with an orbital period of 6,071 years. You can take a look at the orbit, its orbit. This is this is the solar system with Pluto. Uh, this pink uh, circle is Pluto. So you can see how it is enormously far away, even from Pluto. So it's really a, 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 a fantastically huge orbital uh, period and, and orbital uh, plane. And according to a, a comic astrological delineation, this TNO is linked definitely to greed, unlimited greed, I would add. Because think about it, when the Alicanto eats too much, it cannot fly. And what is the function of birds? To fly. So actually, when it eats too much, when it's too greedy, and it feels its stomach to an extent that it, it is unable to function as it is, as it should be. And even, you know, making uh, itself uh, prone to being caught by hunters. Now, this is exactly what is happening to our greedy leaders and, and uh, transnational uh, global corporations. That's what they do. And uh, again, uh, when we uh, ourselves amass too much wealth, we are also pinned to the earth. So we are losing our ability to soar. And this is something that I've seen so many times. If you are uh, getting rich simply by working hard, having an invention, doing your job uh, the best way possible, then you know that this is hard earned and you appreciate it. And you know that you could actually redo it any time. It's quite funny because uh, uh, I've seen people change professions at the, their midlife crisis, either because they realize that they are no longer interested in what they were doing or because there was a new situation where the old uh, thing doesn't it didn't even function so and these people who were very successful in their primary uh, uh, professions became quite successful in their secondary or third uh, professions as well uh, so if you look around and you can see such people you can actually tell that yeah being uh, excellent in something to excel uh, in something means that you are able to excel in many diverse other stuff because being successful means a lot of hard work and willingness to learn. And uh, if you have those two and a relatively high IQ and you're willing to put uh, enough energy and effort into anything, you will succeed no matter what. But those people who get their wealth by cheating others, by robbing others blind, by doing all kinds of shady things, they know that they would not be able to recreate that wealth and of course, they they are scared to, of losing it. And so what they do, do they do? They hoard. They hoard more and more and more. And they are never satisfied and never, never happy about it because they know in their hearts that they don't deserve what they have. So this is kind of linked to the, the uh, myth and also to the astrological delineation of uh, Alicanto. And uh, besides that, of course, Alicanto also symbolizes the treasures that we ourselves worked for or uncovered. Uh, that is why its motto or it, uh, is like, I'm bringing the treasures I, I work for to the surface. I am amassing them sparingly because I don't want to become grounded. So that's the message of Alicanto. So let's take a look at the London chart, uh, what else it has. And it's quite interesting because it has a complex, anoretic, partly dissociated planetary picture. Anoretic means that... Uh, um, planet or a special object is at the very last degree of a sign. And it means that it, this particular uh, celestial object is being stuck. So actually, if you have in your own chart 
things that are at 29 degrees, it means that you were not able to surpass or accomplish or just even manifest that particular archetype in a previous lifetime. And dissociate means that you might have a, an aspect and it's quite tight. Let's say it's, yeah, it's 121 degrees for a trine or 98 degrees for, uh, sorry, 89 degrees for a square. So you have the, um, the aspect by numerical calculation, but if one planet is at the end of a sign and the other planet is at zero degrees of another sign, then you will have a dissociate aspect. And those aspects don't work properly. They don't function as they should. A trine could be a square or a sextile energy, or a square could be actually a trine or a, 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 a sorry, a trine could be a, a, a square or a quincunx energy, and the square could be a sextile or a trine energy. So everything is really upside down when you have when you see these. Now, I did put uh, the degrees uh, for you to, to uh, take a look. And actually, there are two uh, two celestial objects that are kind of wide by their placement, but I, I let them here nevertheless, and I will explain to you why. One is the sun, which is only at 26 degrees, so nowhere near an erratic, nowhere near really actually at the end of a sign. But the sun has this curious ability that, that whenever there is a planetary uh, picture and the sun is a little bit farther away from the exact degree, even four, five degrees away from the exact, from exactness. And at the moment, the, the sun is at four, uh, four degrees away from exactness. Uh, then the sun simply illuminates the whole bunch, the whole planetary picture. And that is what is happening. So that is an end, and it is exactly conjunct um, the Alicanto, the bird of greed. So that is why I think that uh, during this week, uh, starting um, with the 16th, but not the week is starting, the week is starting on the, with the 14th, but actually the, um, something like that, I, I always mix up the, uh, the date, sorry about that. But anyhow, that particular week could bring us some enlightenment, some highlighting in why these wars are going on, what do they want to achieve, what is the ulterior alter, uh, alter motive behind them, and how these honest are European and American leaders are. And uh, I'm hoping for such an event. I'm just hoping that because at the moment we are uh, going to have a couple of really important uh, elections. So it's, it's going to be 2024 is uh, going to be an election season big time. And yeah, 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 I know that the American election is also important, but uh, even, even more important is the European election on the 9th of June, because it will actually highlight some changes. We are hoping for major change uh, to get rid of this woke, idi idiotic, cretin, uh, stupid and dishonest people that are now leading uh, the um, uh, European Union. Uh, I'm really afraid that it won't be enough. People just don't see. They work too hard. They they are um, at their wit's end. Uh, they tr struggle to make ends meet. They don't really care for politics. Whereas if they chose much better, their life would be better as well. But of course, if you are too tired and uh, too worn out, you don't know this is it. But anyhow, so uh, the sun is one that is kind of uh, sticking out of this bunch. But as I said, it has this illuminating impact. And the other one is, of course, Pluto, which is at two degrees uh, Aquarius, but it is retrograde. So it is it's going backwards, tightening the placements. And also, uh, eventually, it will go back to Capricorn sometime in October and then turn around and then uh, entering um, Aquarius for good for the next 20 years or so. And as you can see, Jupiter is a little bit wide by 27 degrees, 47. Neptune is truly an erratic. That's an erratic position. And Pallas Athena is at zero degrees uh, Sagittarius, effectively going back to Scorpio and becoming an erratic in a mere hours, really. And Astrea is becoming uh, an erratic in half a day. So, or maybe a full day uh, is necessary, but actually it's going to be there. And uh, what you have here is a dissociate crown. A crown is a um, 
mystic rectangle with a harmony triangle on top. And in this case, it is the Sun, Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, Pallas Athena, and Astrea. What we don't have here is the Pluto, Jupiter, or Pluto Sun trine. This is missing, but actually the, uh, the crown is there, so it doesn't have this portion of it. Uh, and of course, it is dissociate because uh, Pluto is already in, in uh, Aquarius, while uh, the opposition, so the opposition here with Astrea should be Cancer Capricorn, but of course, uh, um, Australia is, yes, it, it's in, in Cancer, but the Pluto is already uh, in Aquarius. So this is a an opposition, typical dissociate opposition, which is uh, uh, in Queen Kung's energy. So this, this is why it is dissociate. And um, there is also a dissociate T-square involving Mercury at one degree, uh, one and a half, uh, one degree, uh, Taurus. Again, uh, uh, Pluto and Australia. So actually, the Pluto Mercury square is in sextile. Oh no, that's uh, sorry, that's that's okay. The uh, Mercury uh, Australia square, uh, square is in sextile energies. So that's another typical uh, example for a dissociate aspect. There's also uh, a dissociate engine. Engines are funny creatures because they are made up by three distinctly different aspect families: a square, a trine, and a quincunx. So you have a uh, high impact energy aspect, that's, that's the square, you have a blessing aspect, the trine, and the karmic intent uh, of the Queen Kung. So that's, th those are engines and they're very powerful. And uh, uh, this particular one is made up by Mercury, Pallas, Athena, and Astrea. So uh, uh, again, uh, it is Astrea, which is kind of uh, out of energetically. And there's also a little engine, which is energetically fine. Little engines are made up by square, squares, quincunxins, and sextiles instead of trines. So they have less harmony, but more potential, uh, whereas the a sextile gives you the, the potential to work. And this particular little engine is made up by Mercury, Pluto, and Pallas Athena. And since Pallas Athena is still it, just barely in Sag, it is still energetically okay. So that's that's a complex energy uh, uh, and um, partly dissociated planetary picture. And again, you can see that nothing seems to actually be what it is. Everything seems to kind of uh, kind of act in a different way, not in a so uh, not the way we are supposed to understand, not the way we are used to. Uh, so that that is the space time energy. That is the flavor of the space time energy, and. If we look at the transcendental celestial objects that are uh, accompanying the main placements, uh, you can see that the, between the Sun and Jupiter is still a little bit over two degrees, actually. No, not over, under two degrees, but still it's two degrees, yeah, because Jupiter is at 2747 and the Sun is 2609, so almost two degrees. And since the um, orb or celestial object is only one degree, I separated the Sun and Jupiter's uh, celestial objects. And again, it, they are color coded. Uh, magenta or purple are asteroids. Asteroids are uh, in the, you can find them in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So between the last personal planet and the first destiny planet, and they open up our personal karmic energies. Uh, blue uh, is for TNOs, FDOs, centaurs, um, blue tinos, whatever, any trans-Neptunian object that is in the Kuiper belt or the um, uh, old cloud. And these are uh, describing our karmic wounds and also uh, what we can do about those wounds. Some of them turn into uh, phobias and all kinds of terrible things, but mostly uh, can be turned into special traits. And then uh, the uh, the pink the, those are blue. And then the uh, the red ones are fixed stars, so they are not part of the solar system. They are out at in the universe, and they dis represent uh, worlds, higher dimensional worlds, where your higher dimensional soul energy, soul entity can migrate, can go and learn special traits or can heal. So it's either like a um, rehabilitation center where you go after a very difficult life or you're preparing 
for a difficult life there. They had all kinds of interesting uh, understandings there. So for the sun, we have karma. Of course, it's a very, very karmic moment in time. Alicanto, this is what we are talking about. And Argoal, which is Beta Persos. And Argoal, uh, again, uh, just a, a, a note of warning. If you have uh, any classical text on astrology, which has a chapter on, on fixed stars, you usually can read very dark, gloomy, and, and horrible um, descriptions of fixed stars. By definition, fixed stars cannot bring anything bad. They are not part of the human uh, existence, not part of the human experience. They are out there, in, they are universal in energy, so they never bring bad stuff. Yes, we can utilize them badly, that's fine. <laughs> of course, we can utilize anything badly, but uh, we can actually learn, we can learn how to elevate ourselves to their energies. And Agua is the uh, probably the single most um, uh, horribly treated star because you cannot find all kinds of horrible things linked to it, whereas Agua is simply a feminine uh, star, which uh, I, which you go to either when you had a horrible feminine life and you want to just, uh, chill and want to rehabilitate yourself, or when you know that you you are going to have a very difficult task as a, as a feminine, and you learn how to deal with it. That's Argo, be the persons. On Jupiter, you have two asteroids, Lucifer and Lathesis. Lucifer, the light bringer. So again, uh, we need to shed light on things that are ugly, that are mischievous or mis mistreated or horrible. And it's not what legacy media is telling you. The truth is not that. The tr you can go to, to uh, understand the truth if you research it. Lachesis is the uh, middle of the fates. And she um, she's the one who is creating... Uh, uh, actually measuring the threads of your life. So uh, that is what you do. And on Mercury, you have, you have paradise. Yes, we could create paradise here on Earth if we just paid attention and wouldn't hoard. And Mirach, which is Beta Andromeda. Mirach is a feminine star, a very strong feminine star, where, again, it's a healing word for negative feminine lives and uh, preparation for uh, a life as a feminine. It often needs to be done there. And on Neptune, you have Simile, uh, who is one of uh, Zeus's lovers, who becomes pregnant by uh, him. And uh, Hera, the uh, very jealous uh, wife of Zeus, um, uh, hides herself, her true uh, figure, and tells her to ask Zeus to show his true self, which is, of course, lightning. And poor Simile is burning to death. And uh, it's it's an interesting story, if you come to think of it, that if you want to understand or uncover the truth, if you want to know the truth, you might burn to death. Uh, of course, uh, Samaria is the mother of, uh, of Dionysus, and Dionysus survives this whole thing because he is a, uh, he is a, a deity. So, uh, But Samaria dies in the impact. And Sheat, which is the main healing bird for fresh suicide victims, that's on Neptune. And Neptune will be around Sheat for quite a while, actually. Um, I would say most of the time until it actually moves into, into Aries in uh, 2026, which signifies the new, the starting of a new, brand new era when both Saturn and Neptune move into Aries uh, together. With Pluto, we have still Altair, and for a while, Pluto will be there. Uh, Altair is Aqua, uh, Alpha Aquila, uh, the, the eagle, and it, this, is, this is one of the so-called shaman stars, which you can actually move up on a higher level and make uh, 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 some very interesting, uh, under, you can understand a lot of stuff uh, with the help of it. And of course, Athena, you have Hidalgo, who was a Mexican hero and um, uh, so a, a, a freedom fighter. That's what we need to do, but wisely. And on Astrea, you have Asclepius, the healer, the Greek demigod of healing. And and uh, he was a phys physician who uh, healed people in caves, actually. So that is the, the um, uh, Sun Alicanto conjunction, Kazimi, actually. That's the space-time moment. And as I said, it heralds 
some important conjunctions that will occur between May, 9, May 18th and 20th, which I'm going to make a separate video and soon we'll uh, post it as well. We do live in interesting times. How we are going to utilize this? The half the people are still asleep. The other half are too overworked, too frightened, too um, carrying too heavy burdens to pay attention to what is happening out there. And at the same time, um, uh, the, the, uh, we need to understand what's happening. We need to ask the questions and we need to act uh, accordingly because we are we the people and democracy works with the people. Even though um, now uh, people like, like uh, Klaus Schwab would like to exchange um, AI for voting systems and say that now with ChatGP, ChatGP knows how you're going to vote. So we, why would we need uh, elections? We just we are going to just ask ChatGP what it thinks we would like to do. That's the brave new word that they are planning for us. And I really recommend you pay attention to things around you and act accordingly until we can. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.